Hi everyone, welcome to this video demo to show you how you can use Amazon Web Services or AWS to host your e-learning content. Now this differs from normal hosting where you may need to take out a contract for a yearly fee or a monthly fee. With AWS it is pay as you go so the more visitors you get to your site or to your content the more you pay. Uh, realistically, unless you were getting hundreds and thousands of visitors uh, a day or a month, uh, you're probably likely to spend very little, a, a few dollars a month uh, at the most. Now, uh, this video does pick up from us already having the AWS account. So if you do need to sign up for AWS, uh, there are a number of videos available uh, and there are some tutorials to show you. It's just like signing up for a normal web service. If you already have an Amazon.com account, that will work uh, because AWS or Amazon Web Services is part of the Amazon suite of, uh, of tools and features. So I'm just gonna show you the end result of what we're achieving here. Now, uh, what we've got here in front of us is we've got a Captivate e-learning module, which we've published out of Captivate and it's fully functional. Uh, you can see I can click on the arrows. Uh, this, particular pro, uh, this particular module uh, is interactive. I uh, can use my uh, keys on the keyboard, but I just want you to have a look at the URL. So this web address up the top is looking at uh, Amazon AWS. Uh, dot com. Now forward slash Sterica, which is actually my last name, uh, that first bit after the dot com forward slash is called a bucket and we'll see how to create that shortly. And then this next part after the next forward slash is the folder that we uploaded. Now that folder was generated from Captivate. So we just uploaded the whole folder and then AWS took care of the rest. And this index.h the index.html file is the file that contains the published Captivate uh, program or the published Captivate file. So this, uh, this little program we've created or this uh, Captivate file that we've published. Uh, also what we're going to do is we'll quickly show you how you can then link to that site or to that URL from uh, your free WordPress site. Be sure to check out our other video on how to create your free WordPress site if you want to set up your portfolio. And just to show you here, I'll scroll down, scroll down this particular page, click the link below to launch my sample. If I click on that, and then that launches straight into the Amazon AWS. So you've got uh, some pretty cost-effective uh, tools at hand to be able to set up your portfolio and to uh, show off your interactive Captivate or uh, any other authoring tool you might use. Uh, those modules for you there. So as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you first of all how to set up the bucket or where to go once you've uh, signed up for AWS and we'll just actually click over to there now. Uh, so I already have an AWS account. Uh, so once again, if you just follow uh, some already existing tutorials on the internet or on the web, uh, how to set up your AWS account. When you set it up, uh, you'll log in and you'll arrive at this particular page in front of you. This page does change every six to 12 months. So this video being uh, recorded in the first half of 2019, chances are if you're watching this a couple of years later, then this uh, screen may have changed. But the main thing that we're looking for here, look, there's a lot in here. It, it's easy to get lost and a bit overwhelmed as to all of the services that uh, is within the AWS uh, suite of uh, tools and applications. But the one that we're actually looking for is called S3 or Cloud Storage. A really quick way to get to that from the AWS homepage is to click in the little uh, uh, search field, just type in S3. Uh, scalable storage in the cloud. That'll take us to the S3 page. And what I want to show you here is uh, I've already got a bucket set up. Now that bucket, which is a reflection of my last name, that bucket there is, as I said before, is being reflected in this part of the URL. So you'll see there that after the .com forward slash, 
we've got uh, my surname there, but that's actually a reflection of the bucket. Now, if we go back into um, the AWS S3 area, if I click on that bucket, you'll see here I've got a folder. Uh, now that folder is the folder that we uploaded uh, to demonstrate the end result. And that folder there is a reflection of the next part of that URL. So just be mindful of the name that you give your project and, and, and we'll go through that uh, right now. And also, um, yeah, just be mindful of that because it is going to form part of the URL. So let's go back to Captivate. And here's the Captivate file. Now, a couple of things just to prepare yourself for publishing. We don't need to turn on quiz reporting. So you may, in the past, you might have uh, gone into quiz and then quiz preferences, and you may have ticked the box that says uh, reporting uh, where it says enable reporting for this project we don't need to tick that box because we aren't uploading to a learning management system we're just uploading to a website essentially so we don't need to tick that box so don't uh, worry about that uh, so once you've got your Captivate file uh, finished or ready to upload we can just go into file and then uh, publish and you'll see here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in a folder that I've already set up. I'll just call this, um, uh, I'll just put the name um, Mojave Test. Uh, and just to show you how what I'm typing in there is going to be reflected in the URL because Captivate creates a folder based on that project title. And I tend to leave the, this all lowercase. Uh, which is fine. Uh, HTML5 only. We're not zipping the files because it's not going up to a learning management system. And we're just going to tick scalable.html. Just to quickly show you what that does if you're not uh, aware. You'll see that if I make this browser window smaller, uh, you'll see that the content actually scales and it stays in ratio um, to the uh, height and the width. Um, so that's what scalable basically means there. Uh, scalable.html content, and then we'll just click on publish. Now what that's doing is it's generating all of the files uh, that we need for this particular, um, particular sample or example. And while we're waiting for that, let's go back to uh, AWS. I'm just going to go back to uh, following the breadcrumb navigation here. I'll just go back to S3. I'm going to create a bucket. Now, this is a folder, basically, which contains uh, all, of our, uh, all of our other folders or subfolders. So we're essentially creating a website. And now, this bucket name has to be unique within the whole of the AWS ecosystem. So if I was to just type in learning, for example, uh, that's, that's going to be a name that's already been taken by someone else. Uh, so it has to be unique. Um, if I go and click somewhere else, you'll notice that uh, it will probably tell me that um, it's, uh, if I just click on next, uh, bucket name already exists. So uh, that's not my bucket, that's someone else's. So I'm just going to call this... Um, e-learning uh let's just go back here e-learning uh samples now that's going to be another bucket that's already taken um you'll see that bucket so it's a good idea to put your name in there um or some unique identifier that no one else who's using aws s3 no one else has used that bucket name so click on next now uh the next screen which says configure options we're just going to uh, keep all of the uh, options as is just for the time being uh, this isn't really a deep dive into s3 it's just enough to get you started so we're going to click on the next button with these set permissions what I find is I just untick all of these I don't really know enough about uh, Amazon s3 at the moment uh, to know uh, the deep dive of what each individual uh, setting means but what I've found in the past is that just by unticking those what that allows us to do is to upload content that's going to be publicly visible or our bucket becomes publicly visible uh, so people can view our content. So we're just creating the bucket at this stage. Uh, we'll click on create bucket 
And after we've created the bucket here, what it will show you is under access, make sure it says objects can be public. So what we do now is we're gonna go in and click on that bucket, which brings us into the upload screen or the management screen for that particular bucket. And the next thing we're going to do is click on the upload button and that will bring up an upload screen. Uh, we can add individual files, or we can drag and drop complete folders. And this is where we're gonna go back to uh, look for the folder that we created from publishing our Captivate file. So I'll go back to the folder. Uh, here's our Mojave test uh, folder here that Captivate uh, published. So I'm just gonna drag that onto this screen like so. So when I let go, and you'll now notice that uh, it's using that folder name. I'll just click on next. Uh, and the last thing that we want to do here is we do actually want to grant public read access to uh, this object. Uh, here's a little warning. Don't get too put off by the warning. It's just saying everyone in the world will have read access to this object. And that's pretty much what you want to have happen because you want to show off your portfolio of work. So click on the next button here. Uh, and look, just keep it as standard. That's great. Click on next and uh, upload and you'll see what it's going to do down the bottom is it will be uploading all of those files that have been generated and we can just have a quick look here uh, these are all of the files that um, Captivate actually generates so uh, this whole file, apart from those ones that have got VR and uh, Info.js these are just special files that we've made uh, because that particular Captivate file has some web objects in there uh, we do actually have another video to show you how to use web objects, so keep an eye out for that one. Uh, and look, once it's uploaded, you'll see here eLearning Samples, my last name. There's the, um, there's the folder that was just uploaded. We open that folder and you'll see all of the files are in there and the folder structure has been maintained, which is really important. And the file that we want to launch our program or to launch our Captivate file is index.html. So if we click on that and you'll see here, it does give us the object URL. So this is the URL to our Captivate project that we just uploaded. So if we actually click on that and you'll see here that part of the URL after the .com forward slash uh, reflects the bucket name. And then the next part of the URL after that forward slash reflects that folder that we clicked on. Now, last but not least, what I'm going to do, and this should all work as planned, and you'll see that that's, uh, that's working. So we've got a live capt interactive Captivate file live on the internet for pretty much everyone to access. And what I can do here is I can just copy that URL by right mouse clicking on it and choosing copy. I can go back to my uh, WordPress site and I can uh, just edit this page, uh, for example. So I'll just go in and edit this page uh, and look out for our other video on how to create your free WordPress site for your portfolio. And then all I need to do here, uh, and you can do this on any website. Uh, I'm just gonna add a block at the top. It's just gonna be paragraph, uh, nothing too uh, crazy. Um, I've just pasted that URL. Uh, so there's the URL right there, and I'm just going to also uh, click on the link button because I want to create a link that's automatically picked up that it's a link. Now, one last thing, this is really important. We want that link to open up in a new tab. So I'm just editing that link. I'm going to link settings, click on open in new tab, and I need to press that button called apply. So that's really important any links from your website, that any links that jump out of your website to another location or another website should open in a new tab. It's sort of uh, web practice 101. I'm just gonna update my uh, WordPress page. Uh, that link, and I'll just click on view page. That link should now appear at the top of that page. There it is right there. If I click on that, and you'll now notice that my uh, Captivate file, which I just uploaded, um, is now live on the internet and I can incorporate that link as part of my portfolio. So look, just a quick little recap on all of that. First of all, what we obviously needed to do there 
was to sign up for AWS Web Services. Uh, if you've got an Amazon account, you should be able to uh, log in or use that account to sign up and open up the AWS suite of services. Once you have successfully managed to sign up and log into AWS, from your home screen or from the AWS Management Console, which is essentially the, the home screen of, of AWS, we want to look for S3, which is Scalable Storage. We click on Scalable Storage. You then want to create your bucket. So you need to have at least one bucket in there that you put all of your stuff in there. And then uh, once you've created your bucket, making sure that you allow the public to view us, then you can upload content into that bucket uh, and then add the folder from your published Captivate file. And look, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's not a lot uh, else that, um, that happens there. So um, happy AWSing and, uh, and um, hope you can get all of your uh, magnificent uh, authoring or e-learning, interactive e-learning modules out on the internet for everyone to view. So uh, good luck with it all.